Able Listed Bango is an online payments company which enables users uh, to pay for goods that they buy through the system without using credit cards. Uh, Paul Larby is the chief executive. He joins us now. Paul, welcome. Uh, you just produced uh, numbers out for the full year which show revenue up 38%. percent has been a touch uh, shy on what we saw on EBITDA last year. Uh, but it's been a transformative year, according to your statement this morning. Explain more about what's been going on. Yeah, I think there are. I think there are two elements that are part of that. I think fundamentally, the the Bangor business is is really going strong. The organic growth within the business is is you know is, is has never been stronger. Uh, we have multiple elements to the business. We have that payments business that you talked about about helping people purchase things without using their credit card. We have what we call our digital vending machine. We'll talk a little bit about that later. That's the way of sort of purchasing subscriptions. And then we have the Bangor audiences business, which uses all that payment data to help marketing teams find new paying users and target based on what we call purchase behavior. And so the business has really grown uh, strongly over the past 12 months. But one of the reasons it was a transformative year is we acquired uh, the payments business of Entity Docomo, which previously traded as Docomo Digital. Uh, that in effect, you know, shot us forward two years in terms of our growth trajectory, brought three and a half billion of additional spend onto the platform. That means we exit, exited last year with a run rate of about $8.6 billion worth of transactions that flow through the platform every year and really just solidifies our position as a leader in the market. So yeah, I think transformative year is a good description. Yeah, let's pick up on that point you mentioned about digital vending machines. Uh, explain more about this business and how it contributes. Yeah, so for us, the digital vending machine is really um, a way of enabling what's sometimes called in the industry super bundling. And that's where you get, for example, uh, your, your broadband provider at home providing you third party services that they sort of bundle or add on to your sort of broadband bill. So you can imagine you buy, you know, buying uh, your service from BT and you can get you know, Netflix or BritBox or McAfee and have all those different services uh, added on to your, to your BT bill. And really, it's, it's really becoming accelerated. And we have customers now, for example, Verizon in the US with their Plus Play offer, who offer 20, 30, 40 plus different potential subscription services that you can charge onto your utility bill. You know, we're in a, an economy where the digital subscription economy is growing really strong. There are subscriptions for everything now from not just video services, music and games, but razor blades, coffee, uh, you, you name it. There's a subscription for it. And super bundling is a way of helping users manage all those subscriptions, put them all in one place and, and create a sort of a cost effective way of putting all those subscriptions uh, that they use on a daily basis so they can add, subtract, pause. Uh, bring on new subscriptions uh, all in a, a very simple way. And it's a way of helping people like telcos differentiate their first party services. And, and you also mentioned Bango audiences. Ex explain more about this. I mean, there's, there's, uh, I know your, your, your reach goes far and wide. Uh, how does this interact with, with other commercial organizations and how does it bring money onto the balance sheet for the Bango? So what we've been in, in processing those payments and charging things to form bills and using the digital vending machine, we've generated this huge volume of payment data. I mentioned a little while ago, it's other $8.6 billion worth of transactions through the platform. What we realized actually there's a there's a massive value in the, in that data. And if we if we use it in the right way, and we, we sort of basically group users together based on what people buy, how often they buy, and what they purchase. We can create targeted audience for marketing teams to use so they can help find their next paying user. For example, if you're an app developer who's launching a strategy game in Taiwan, rather than just market based on soft in indicators such as what people have searched for or what people have liked, you can market to a group of people who have a history of making purchases in similar games in the same geography. So it's a really, really strong mechanism for helping you better target your marketing campaigns. And it, it generally helps marketing teams increase their effectiveness by between two and nine times. So it really is a, is a fundamental step change in, in marketing technology. And for Bango, it's a it's a double-sided benefit. We charge for the use of that service, but as users make purchase more services, we also create a charge from processing those payments. So we have what's called the virtuous circle, where the more payments we process, the bigger volume of data we have. The bigger volume of data we have, the better insights we can generate. The better insights we can generate, the more payments they get processed. So it's what we call our virtuous circle. It's interesting talking to chief executives of companies like Bango, because as as People that use the internet for purchases, I mean, I do. I'm, I'm sure the vast majority of the people watching this interview do. And I guess that some interact with your services without even knowing it's happening. Well, name some of your clients. Explain where the software goes and it is used uh, so that we can understand more about the sort of corporations we interact with that might use that software. 
Yeah, so largely if you're uh, having one subscription, you're paying for it on a different subscription. So if you're, if I used the BT example before, if you're buying Microsoft Game Pass, Microsoft 365, Netflix, BritBox, Norton Utilities, whatever it is, and charging to your T BT bill, it's Bango underneath that's enabling that. If you're buying something through the Google Play Store and charging it to your three bill in the UK, again, it's Bango that's powering that. So generally, if you're if you're purchasing something in a way that's not using credit card by charging it to another bill, there's a good chance that Bango are enabling that subscription. And if likewise, if you're on Facebook and you're seeing adverts that are very relevant uh, for, for for topics that you're interested in, in areas where you've made purchases before, it's probably Bango that's using that data to help you uh, receive more targeted ads rather than just receiving any old ads for, for things that are really not relevant. So like you say, we're, we're one of those uh, technology platform companies that is behind a lot of these sort of payment choices and payment decisions, uh, but uh, not, a, not a non-consumer brand where we really power and enable some of the largest consumer brands like Google, Netflix, et cetera, to, to really grow and help accelerate their growth and, and reach and find new paying customers. Increasingly, as an interviewer, I'm asking about sustainability as well. Um, how do you engage with, with this? Because this is obviously uh, critical importance now as companies expand around the world. Um, how, how do you, um, what, what's your position with regards to sustainability? Yeah, I think there's a there's a few important elements on sustainability. I think the first of which is is people. And at Bangor, we have a really strong culture. We talk about our our thrive values, and we don't just sort of laminate those and put them on a poster. Those are really embedded into the culture of the organisation, and that's very evident in our employee engagement score. So we received an engagement score of eighty three percent last year. It's our seventh consecutive year of increasing. It really is sort of a, a best in class employee engagement score. And as a result. We have a uh, very low, very low employee uh, churn. So we're we're building the company and recruiting for growth because we have that strong culture uh, that, that's very powerful and and also very diverse. We won the AIM Awards Diversity Champion, where diversity is really again embedded within the culture and, and values at Bango. And then we have the environmental aspect on top. And we committed a few years ago to meet carbon neutral. We actually extended that uh, this year and committed to net zero uh, by 2040 and actually reduced. Uh, our carbon intensity uh, by by over ten percent. So we're you know all aspects for us are important. This is not just about building a business. This is about building a business that is sustainable for the future, and both the environmental aspects as well as the people are a key parts of that. In in a time when we're obviously all looking at cost, does this add much to the bottom line in terms of the the cost that you're you're expending to drive the business forward with um, uh, this move with sustainability? No, I think I think ultimately you get more back than than you generally give, right? Especially on the people side, the more engaged people are. You know, we have a, a re incredibly passionate team that are focused just on on driving the business forward. That you know reduces our churn. In fact, that reduces our costs because we're not having to spend time, effort, and money on on hiring replacements. We're, we have a team that are engaged and are very knowledgeable in the industry and, and helping to drive the business forward. So I think ultimately, in all these diversity elements, they generally add to the business, and you, you generally get more back than you give. Yeah. Um, we, we've been talking about your full year numbers up to the 31st of December. How's the new year started? Here we are now uh, very close to the second quarter of the year. Can you believe it? Um, how has this first quarter gone? The first quarter started very strong, especially from a from a digital vending uh, machine perspective. And I look at the new deals that we've, we've landed in this quarter, and that's given us very, very strong confidence for the year ahead. And as a result, we've increased our outlook for recurring revenue, increasing it from we'd previously indicated around $7 million dollars. Uh, at the end of this year as the exit ARR rate, we're now saying that's going to be $10 million. So, And that's all due to the, the success that our existing customers have, but also due to the uh, the traction we've got in the first quarter of the year in terms of bringing new customers onto the platform. Yeah. Look, Paul, we've got to leave it there, but thanks indeed for joining us. Interesting story. Uh, and uh, notice that the uh, shares are up just a touch on yesterday's uh, close, Bango PLC, not too far away from recent highs in the market. That's Paul Larby. He's the chief executive of Bango PLC.